So I do very minimal angiography since we have an MRA, okay? And we're just using a Benson wire here and we're probably pretty close to our target. Mac, can you grab that wire? So we're gonna try to do this without a microcatheter, which is my preferred method. Uh, but I know some people on the panel use microcatheters, but we'll, we know that her artery is gonna probably be pretty big. So I usually puff a little bit of contrast until I actually see the origin. And so keep in mind, we haven't, we, we haven't used the DSA as of yet, we may. It's right there, you guys can see it, mm -hmm. right there. So it may be a little bit tricky to make that turn. So we do have a wire, we have a fathom wire there. And we're gonna send the fathom wire in potentially without the microcatheter just to get this catheter to make that turn. So I'm gonna go to, so we're on the left side. So for the students that are listening, we usually go into a, a little bit of a ipsilateral oblique and then I'll do a quick little DSA. All right. Let's see if we can put a little curve on that wire there. We really just have to make that first turn and then we should be able to get this four French catheter into the uterine artery. So Aaron, you're putting the fathom wire directly into the four French catheter. Um, seems to me that you're not gonna use a micro catheter. Can you comment on that? I'm not planning on it. I don't have much of a curve. Oh, that's, that should be our- There you go, got it. So basically, if I can get this wire, at least the stiff part, uh, a little bit further in, which I did, this catheter will track beautifully. And you don't really need a microcatheter. What I usually do before I give the Lido is I, is I add nitro in first for that reason. And that, that's generally been my method for a long time and it seems to work pretty well. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the particles. We're using 600 uh, hydro pearls. Um, for a while, I was when I was doing femoral, I used Cobra and, you know, a Waltman's okay. looper switched to a rim on the ipsilateral side. And quite frankly, I actually think going radially or going with the Roberts uterine catheter usually is, allows you to do this sort of puff down technique much easier. It just usually slides right into the uterine artery on most cases. Of course, there's some that are in atypical origins okay. that are complicated. So... I usually give two vials of the 600s and then I jump up to eight after the first two vials, um, just because it looks like we're getting some stasis, but it's clearly not what we want to use as an endpoint. I, I typically use the five beat stasis. I don't know, Scott, are you, you in a, you're in agreement with the five? No, beat absolutely. Stasis. A couple 600s, a couple 800s. If it's a big hose, which the other side was more of a hose than this side, um, you know, we, we typically try to get into it with the four French, which, you know, I know spasm's an issue, but I sometimes don't mind spasm at the origin because it can prevent reflux as long as you can get the catheter passed. Um, and I don't think it affects the embolization, at least in my experience. You can see it sort of just, I think that's it. There you go. So what I'm feeling now with the catheter as it goes towards the origin is it, it looks like there's probably a little spasm here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back the catheter and then I'm going to just sort of run through it a little bit and see if it pops through. It doesn't seem like it wants to. There we go. There you go. Nice. Okay. So even though we have spasm, I'm not that worried about it. Can we have the nitro? I'm going to give some nitro and then we're going to start embolizing on this side and then we're done. Take a look. What do you guys think? Mm. No. Not convinced. Yeah, yeah no. pull back out. No. Nope. Maybe the cystic. Cervical, maybe? Ah. All right. So why don't we try that microcatheter, Alex? Do you have the secure 2.8? One thing I'm curious about, Aaron, is when you do that, when you did your um, DSA, why not use an overlay or a roadmap feature or something? That's a great question. So what I, what I like to do is visualize as I puff, and sometimes the overlay gets in the way of that, at least on this machine. So I think Teresa has experience with this microcatheter, which is why I picked it. Um, I'm gonna do a quick little DSA and then we'll do an overlay. Thank you. 
This is the 150 secure microcatheter. We can just load that with the Fathom. And this still catheter maintain. will take uh, 700. It says it on the box. Uh, there's three and different sizes. Like there's a 2.4, a 2.7, and a 2.8. I actually picked the 2.8 for that reason. Uh, while we're discussing the that, that and all the rest, what do you use for radial approach ovarian artery uh, catheterization? Any suggestions? I think the Sarah is the thing that I found most successful when it's in its typical location. And I actually learned that from Aaron. Um, I had tried a bunch of different catheters before that. When it's off a of renal, it's a, you know, that's an easy selection. I use any kind of hockey, hockey uh, stick shaped catheter. Um, but when it's, uh, when it's off its typical location, I think the Sarah works the best from a radial approach to get into the origin of the ovarian. Yeah, I agree. What are you, what are you up to? So Scott and I have been working pretty diligently over here. We have a little bit of a tricky angle. I think it was wishful thinking to think that we could get into this with a four French catheter. We did a couple different obliques. Can you guys hear us? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. So what we have in now, we switched out for a 125 Merit Cobra. And we also have, we have a Glidewire GT double angle. We pulled out a couple different things here. Do you guys see the angle there? It's that nub off to the left. One more, right there. That nub off to the left. Yeah. And then it goes back on itself. So I'm 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 concerned that your diagnostic catheter is overcommitted, and you're not going to be able to make that uh, that hairpin loop. I'll just show you guys what we're looking at here. Yeah, that's mostly gluteal. Yeah, I think you're overcommitted there on that view. Yeah, so we we have to get this catheter down into the the trunk here, and then we can work with the microcatheter. So I think we're going to try an angled microcatheter. I would I would probably be a little conservative, and I would go to a go to the 400. Um, if if you're using uh, what what are you using as your embolic? Before I say right anything. now we we have 600 hydropearls. All right, so I would probably start with 400 hydropearls, especially because you already did the other side, and uh, I would see where that where that where that gets you. And then uh, if you need, if it's going smoothly, then I would escalate to a larger size. But I, I would not start with the 600. I would start with 400. We're, we have a 2.4 direction with a burn tip. We'll see if that gives us any advantage here. Can you play three runs ago, please? Go back to the previous. You can see the uh, angle here on this on this image. It's it's sort of that double density coming off the, the large trunk of the inferior gluteal. Right. So um, so I'm going to say that it's the vessel that's coming down towards seven o'clock, not five o'clock, but seven o'clock, which looks like it has two or three knuckles in it. Correct. Um, and that because of all the uh, redundancy in that vessel that it's particularly challenging. The other uh, technical note is that you can see the catheter there is pointing very medially. In in this view, the origin of the vessel is coming off at 3, 330 um, below the catheter there. So it's that first branch that's coming off towards, towards the middle. And as you can see from the angle of the diagnostic catheter, which is pointing now towards 530, 6 o'clock, to get it to go back, all of a sudden back up towards three o'clock is very challenging. And again, this is totally off label, but the, what I was referring to was cutting the nose or beveling the nose of the diagnostic catheter to make it so that you, you would have the opportunity to be able to advance a microcatheter that would point up. Uh, but even that is not gonna take a lot of the redundancy out of this and not gonna make it so much easier. So now we're in a different oblique. And again, what they're trying to do is they're trying to go towards seven o'clock. And that microcatheter is certainly facing in the right direction, but they're, they're getting stuck into this other dominant branch, which is coming off towards four o'clock. 
and they're just really trying to get almost completely as a hairpin loop turned back on themselves here. Do you have the, do you have the, are you thinking about using the direction still or no? Yeah, actually we just put that in. We have a couple different angles here. I'm gonna show you the angle that we're dealing with. Here we go. Can you guys see that? Can you go so image Aaron, by image please? Aaron, you see how you're totally superimposed again? Yeah, maybe we should change the angulation. Well, the, the question uh, is, do you, do, do, do you want to go RAO 45 and see if that helps you? Scott, Scott didn't know what he was getting into by doing this case. Yeah, I know. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best view you've, you've had yet, without question. Yeah. Okay. Can we put that up? So we're at 41 RAO and 11 cranial. Wire back, please. So Teresa was really describing extremely well the, the technical challenges with this. You're dealing with a, a vessel that's about five, six millimeters in diameter, and you're trying to make a 110 degree turn with a catheter that has a diameter of less than one millimeter. And so, and you're doing it from five feet away. So it is not easy. It's probably one of the more technically challenging things that we do with microcatheters. We we don't look forward to this, and it really does require being very very open minded, um, and trying to trade out and take a lot of different shapes. Oh, here we go. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're going to advance this. And the, the the problem that they're having is the lack of back wall support. So that they're, Aaron, can you um, humor all of us watching in at home and just do an injection through the microcatheter so we can oh, all be completely convinced that you're in the right vessel? We're, we're we're going to. Don't worry. All right. Just flushing this. Do we have any nitro? We're going to embolize right now. We have 400. These are 600s. We did a vial of 400 as per your recommendation. Again, 2.4 direction. I don't remember the last time I had to use a 2.4 microcatheter for, for a UFI. Maybe Scott remembers, but I don't. No, sir. <laughs> Looks like you're getting close. We're very close. So I think it might be try time to try the 800s. Yeah. Scott doesn't want to, but. Oh, I, think, I do. I think we're curious. So this is sort of a good endpoint anyway. I think they're going to go fine. We'll find out. That. Yes, they Yeah. All right. They went through. I would do a final run. Okay. So one tip for radial access and UFI, because this, the issue of stroke comes up quite a bit when we have these discussions at meetings, et cetera. I always, without fail, take the microcatheter out or anything that has an embolic particle or material in it, and we throw that away before we remove any catheter across the arch. And so if you're gonna inject liquid embolic, you really, or any embolic, you really have to use um, a microcatheter. If you're using beads through this, you need to make sure they're flushed and you should never pull this across the arch without a wire. And so Scott's putting a Benson wire in just to uh, open the catheter and make sure there's nothing left in it as we pull it out. Okay, let's clean and we clean and dry the wrist area. You guys see that? Okay, we're gonna pull the, the sheath back about an inch. Skin is nice and dry. We're gonna take the, the green dot 
think you're blocking it, Scott. Sorry, dude. All right. I'm going to put this right over the puncture site. You don't really want to put the green dot over the skin entry site. You want to you want to put it over the puncture site. That's really important. I start with 15 cc's of air with your finger over the back of the plunger. And then the sheath comes out. And then we slowly take the air back until we feel a pulse or you see bleeding, which I just saw right there. And when you see bleeding, you put one cc back in. And we should have a good pulse the whole time. And that's it. So thank you everybody for being patient.